Welcome! Today I'm doing another album reaction. It's been a while since I've talked about this particular guy on the channel, even though I've mentioned him like in about maybe five or six different videos. And I've done a whole DRC on this guy back in like, I think, DRC episode five. And also reacted to an album of his back in late 2022. Since 2022, when I mentioned that this guy has released an album every single year um, from 2015 onwards and was pretty prolific before that anyway, he took a break in 2023 um, to focus on another band of his called The Last Fox Stars, which was a bit of a um, super group made up of different high profile Japanese artists. And now he's back with kind of confusingly one slash two albums. To basically break this down, he announced early this year that in April he would be releasing in Japan only, on CD only, an album called Lost in Love. And later in the year we'll be re releasing a counterpart album to that called Found in Pain. As far as I can work out, or as far as my wife's been able to work out, the Lost in Love album in Japan had nine tracks on it, some of which are on this, some of which aren't. And in Found in Pain was meant to be this whole other album that was meant to be coming out around about this sort of time. This album, to add more confusion to this whole thing, was meant to come out according to what he said back in April, over the summer months in the West. And then that got pushed back to the beginning of October. And then that got pushed back two more weeks to today, the 23rd of October. Following the sort of Japanese release schedule, it's come out on a Wednesday rather than a Friday, um, which is something that's been adopted by pretty much the rest of the world. The Japanese music industry is incredibly cagey and it's worth going into that at some other time, but not right now. Oh, something I forgot to mention actually is that as well as um, this album coming out quite late in the year, the idea that he said at the beginning of the year that there were going to be two albums, Lost in Love, Found in Pain, were now going to get kind of sandwiched together. And so I was expecting to see that this album would have like 20 or so songs, but actually it's just got 12. I don't know if he's just picked like his favorite from each and made a compilation album for the Western release for the, you know, um, international release. But yeah, there's less here than I was like looking forward to hopefully it's all good stuff i just kind of want to react to this album um i'm not sure what to expect miyavi for those who don't know can be best described broadly speaking very broadly speaking as a rock guitarist frontman but in recent years he has gone more and more into sort of pop and hip-hop and synth sort of influences sometimes the pop influences are really really strong i'm kind of hoping that this is gonna rock the last thing i reacted to of his was actually quite good i really liked that but that was just a covers ep this is his first studio album officially since 2021 let's get into it so this one's called intro it's been a while since I had since I had an album where it just had a song called Intro. Yes, yeah, so we're getting this Lost in Love. Bassy vocal manipulation and Tell then me. spoken Is word. Love that truly controls us. One emotion. It's like a heartbeat thing going on. We can't ignore. All very theatrical, that's so typical of Miyavi. You can get lost the most. In a city. So it's kind of just like a Is it in like a sound template to begin the album. There's not really any guitar to speak of, as you can see. Is it in the emotions that we bury? That we really find ourselves. Don't be scared. Okay. 
So getting straight in there with a the pop block. Broken fantasy. I mean, this is like the definition of like pop block. It feels very Miyavi. I like this chorus. Got a real nice like chugging guitar underneath. That that's what's selling it to me. Cause I I rate Miyavi as a guitarist predominantly. So seeing him go into more pop and uh, and less away from what I'm saying, less focused on sort of rock things which are traditionally guitar heavy. Always Okay. Hold on. Yeah, it's a nice little guitar break. With Miyavi, it's really about technicality and the guitar side of things. It's more about um, just attitude and brashness. But still, what I was saying before is that I always fear that he's going to step away from more guitar centric sound which is ridiculous because he's predominantly known as a guitarist it's got a very contemporary rock feel to it Now this track's been out for a little while as a single, it's called Eat Eat Eat. And honestly, I haven't really listened to it in its entirety yet. Yeah, this feels very like contemporary pop. Um, even like a little bit like a K-pop sort of boy band feeling to it. Which is not my thing. I just want to get some real like chunky lead guitar in here and that will liven it up. Yeah, this this one is never going to be one of my favourite Miyagi songs. Simply for lack of like obvious lead guitar elements, but I'm not just basic like that, it's also got this pop aesthetic that feels very established right now, should we say? I can see how like a large swath of Miyavi's fans get better guitar here. Feels a bit little too late, almost. Could be the whole outro now. But yeah, I can see how a lot of people might really eat this up. Pardon the pun. But it doesn't quite do it for me. So this is called We Stay Up All Night, La Da Da Da. Okay, already prefer the drums on this. Very saturated in the mix, like the vocals. This is such a typical thing of Miyavi's to have this very heavy distortion and saturation on 
the lead element, the guitar and the voice. It started off stronger, I feel, than how it's ended up. It's not that it's bad, it's just... Well, I was going to say that it's just that it doesn't grab my attention, but here... The double time drums, for example, that... that hint of a breakdown beforehand so I'd love him to just do metal again you know I, I really am but someone who prefers heavier music and Miyavi definitely can do that and you know his pop stuff is good but This chorus feels weak to me. Like it's catchy, but it, it feels weak compared to like the heaviness of what we just went through. Oh, oh, So close in some areas and just not fully taking me there, you know? Like where I want to go with this. Right. This next track is called Real Monsters. We get this kind of call and response of like falsetto and then what sounds like a second vocal la layer. guitar and that, that sort of rockiness is going to go somewhere and then if I could define this album in one word so far it's a tease like it feels like it's teasing me all the time Like you get like a very pop chorus, some heavy guitar stuff, and then it goes into like something that feels like it's just heavily influenced by everything that's going on right now in like um, sort of indie pop. Okay. Get some more energy here that I like. The guitar breaks are all very good. He hasn't stepped away from the guitar at all. Apart from maybe on Eat, Eat, Eat until the very last minute. Okay. Mirror, mirror. Okay, I like this um, vocal and then guitar thing going on. This is alright. I like this one. What's it remind me of? Very 80s. Feel, it feels like the most 80s track of his that I can con currently conjure up. Ooh. 
the, just the changing of the note there was very different from what he would usually do I feel again it reminds me of something else that I've heard but I can't put my finger on it's catchy if I saw him live I'd like him to play something like this Yes, that's keep bringing that. I, I love his guitar breaks. So the more squealy and, and simplistic, the better. <laughs> this might be my favorite song so far on the album. It's got kind of an atmospheric-ness. Ah, that's a odd word. It's kind of got like that. It reminds me of something from like Reanimation from Linkin Park, you know? But really heavy on the guitar. And then with like pop choruses. No, I like this one. It's... Not even close to one of my favourite Miyavi songs. Not even, it doesn't even come close to like how good he can really get. But for this album, oh, nice piano ending. Just cutting straight into it, like those last three notes. Right, so this is tragedy of us. Started off with like nice little sort of eighth note riffs. Might be sixteenth note. Not riff, like like a lick, you know. You got these clean guitar chords, or, or close to clean, I guess. There's probably like a little bit of effect on that. The vocals are one of my favourite, like, patterns. But the way it's balanced against the guitar. So classic. Oh yeah, no, I like, this, this one's good. And a guitar chorus. Or a chorus that's heavily got a guitar in it. Ooh. See, I can't help but think that this one might be another single that's just completely slipped under my radar. This one's building, man. Oh man, that's another good track. That's two in a row that I really like. Little hint of the guitar lick there. Oh, this one. This one builds. I wasn't on it at all and I really am now. Okay, this one slaps. I, I, this one's really like, it started off so weak for me and then it just kept going. It's got the speed and it's got the energy that I'm kind of looking for. Like, you know, that upbeat feeling. It's also got that kind of like... late night sort of um, feeling that you get from like sort of dark wave or, or synth pop. Time 
to do now is just... Ooh. I was going to say I wanted to reintroduce that little guitar lick, but actually, we're going for these... Okay, okay. I'm not even sure anymore. This or Mirror Mirror, which one's my favourite so far, but... I wasn't sold on the vocals at the beginning, and now I'm just really, really, like, wanting to sing along with it, you know? Except I don't know the lyrics. side so weak to me right the first like four tracks I just couldn't get into and now we're getting some good stuff yeah oh okay okay that was good this one you already know getting those big whoa's that we I've come to expect by this point in the album, I say. Don't just go into a, like a little pop chorus now. Keep this energy up. It looks like we might be. Okay, so this track hasn't let up on the end. The gene that I was liking in this intro is very drums led. And then you got this nice little lick. Always can rely on Miyavi for like a really good little lick to put in between the verses. I'm noticing that this album seems to be entirely in English. To the best of my knowledge, I mean, I'm really bad at listening to lyrics the first time I hear an album, or the first ten times. But yeah, typically Miyavi will sort of split between English and Japanese, sometimes entirely one or the other. But it feels like this whole album is, is in English. Ah, oh, why is it going to a drop there? Instead, we got this kind of like synth wave thing. It's probably building up to a guitar, right? It's like a solo. That's the lick again. Okay. Are we back to teasing? We might well be here. After Mirror, Mirror and Tragedy of Us, like what I consider so far to be the high points of the album. Okay. Now this one's interesting. I'm so amazing. Miyavi and George Clinton, as in the George Clinton, like the guy who produced, like, um, I think he was in Funkadelic and then he produced, like, some early Chili Peppers albums. Real old school funk musician. But so far it's not too funky, but I'm hopeful that. George Clinton's going to bring something to this. Because that would work. I think I can hear his voice underneath this. In that chorus there. Also, you may have noticed this, or may not have noticed this, there's not, like, bass guitar in a lot of, um, Miyavi tracks. It's 
very, very much guitar drums when you see them live. And then a couple of other bits here and there, but... This feels like it's got a bass guitar on it, so maybe that's George Clinton playing bass. It's not bad, but I was expecting a bit more, I think. I like that. That's that's a very sort of 80s way of doing a guitar solo towards the end of a track. I mean, I've said it's the George Clinton, but I mean, whichever George Clinton could it be, really? If you go and drop in, oh, featuring George Clinton. Okay, this track is If You Know How To Dance. And I'm not hopeful yet. Yeah, I feel like we're getting back to very... like all the pop music of the past 20 years, you know? Sounds. Which just doesn't carry the same kind of like release to someone like me who's just so about the, the heaviness. You know what, that went a bit Daft Punk here. If it was really Daft Punk, you'd get that repeating like a number 14 times at least. Right, this this bit here is my favourite bit. I want them to build on this. That's that's kind of where I am with this. The rest of the track to me isn't doing it. But this little with the kick snare in between the notes it reminds me of like very early Daft Punk a bit more time honestly I know like there's this concept of the three minute pop song but I really wouldn't mind something that went on for six, seven minutes and really built on some of these key ideas I love. I feel like doing these album reactions really reveals my taste so clearly. Like, I'm really a big fan of like long songs that just like, go in a lot of places and are heavy. Yeah, okay. Right, put your hands on me. Penultimate track, very short album, considering that it feels like it's meant to be two. At least that's what the title suggests. The bass line is interesting. Like those little chimes, those little... Potentially the natural harmonics. But it's just as likely that they're sort of keyboard notes. There's kind of like a pitch modulation on the guitar which I liked there. Very lively. I mean, I can admit that despite a lot of this album not having um, like my kind of taste, including this track, 
I'd be damned if it didn't set a mood. Nice kind of like late night vibe to it. It's very relaxing in a way. I mean, I might just be heavily influenced by this particular track, but I can sense it in other areas as well. Like, it's the perfect album to put on in, like, say, your car as you're driving for a city at night, and I think that's exactly what he's gone for. Oh! I'm a sucker for horns, man. Just a hint of it, just a hint of horns. What sounds like a stylophone solo? I'm up for it if it is. Okay. It's not enough, no. Okay, this is the last track. One more time. And it straight away has very sort of closing track energy. The low sort of strings and strummed singular chords. very very like wet reverb um reverb wet i don't know wet with reverb vocals Yeah, like I say, it's got a very end of album feeling, or maybe end of night feeling. I keep wanting it to just go into double time. There's something about me that wanted it just to speed up a lot. But I do appreciate the classic rock vibe and the heavy amount of guitar we got in the intro. This is another track where it feels like there's nothing bad to say about it. But there's nothing amazingly grabbed my attention either. Um, but it's nice. It's, it's perfectly nice. That one remained predictable right up until the very end, I'd say. That particular track. But yeah, overall. Um, a mixed album. Very mixed for me personally. Uh, there was the track Mirror Mirror and Tragedy of Us. Um, the second one, I believe, might have been a single that flew under my radar. Uh, but the first one, Mirror Mirror those two tracks stood out for me which are literally track six and seven in a 12 track album so it kind of does this where it starts low builds up really high and then it just kind of goes down not quite as down as the first half but um yeah like definitely some good stuff in it and i think a, a little bit for everyone maybe is a way to describe this so yes, that was Miyavi's Lost in Love, Found in Pain. There's actually going to be a significant amount of Miyavi content coming up on this channel. So please subscribe if you're a big fan of his. Um, I will be sort of flitting back and forth between other projects I've got going on. And otherwise, feel free to like the video if you like seeing me react to these kind of albums. And comment about what you thought of particular tracks maybe you thought I was completely wrong on some of his more poppy tracks maybe I'm just 
really old fashioned and just like a dad rocker at heart. I know that about myself, but I'm still here for the debate if you feel like that maybe needs to change. That being said, maybe you agree with me. Either way, put it in the comments what your favourite song was. Also, feel free to check out the rest of my channel for more music reactions. I have got more stuff um, from Miyavi that I've talked about, which will come up at the end of this video. And please feel free to subscribe if you like to see me discussing music, reacting to music, playing retro games, or just waffling about my general life. And with all that being said, have a good one.